So what you see right here is the beginning of the laser head itself. These are all the major parts that will be on here. First of all, we got the red laser, we got the blue laser, we have the Galvo scanners, which is the X and Y mirror that will create the movement that you see in a, with a laser scanner. We have two dichroic mirrors that will reflect the color and combine it into the proper colors to make red, green, and blue colors and any color in between. We have these risers right here that I cut out because everything has to be at exactly at the same level and not all these parts are exactly the same height, as well as this riser right here. So geometrically, everything needs to be lined up pretty perfect on this. Almost everything needs to be at a 45 degree angle to 90 degree angle and it needs to be cut pretty precisely to make it work good, to make alignment much easier later. And I can tell you from experience that when you mess up, alignment becomes very tricky. It becomes very hard to do. So, uh, first thing I gotta do is I gotta start mounting these to these right here so I can get them on there at a 45 degree angle kind of like so. So that's going to be my first part. Okay, what you're looking at now is a very close-up shot of the blue laser and the scanners. Now, what I want you to see here is how the f this is actually at the same level as this right here. This, this little mirror I'm pointing at has to be exactly at the same level as this aperture right there. If not, it is going to be very difficult to get everything aligned. So that part is very important. Everything has to be exactly at the same height. Here's another way to look at it. If I take those out of the way and I just turn that like that, kind of put that right there, now you can actually see how they're exactly at the same height. That aperture and that mirror are perfectly level to each other and that's exactly what you want. So uh, next part is I gotta start drilling some holes. Now, as you can see on the dichroic mirror mount that I have right here, you want the pivot point where this thing is actually going to rotate back and forth where you can actually adjust it to be right below the mirror itself. So you can see there's a hole right there at the adjustment point. That'll make it rotate right there, like that, instead of having it, for example, there, which will cause the mirror to really go out of place and give you a lot of problems right there in your aiming. So you want to try to get your points right below the axes of where you want it to rotate, right there. And that's what we're going to go for. Now you might notice that I drew a couple lines right here. Those lines are going to represent the laser beam paths of the red and the blue laser. Right around here and there is where these will actually go to actually combine the, mirror, to combine the colors and send them out to the gobble scanner right here. So these are just reference lines. They have to be parallel to each other if you want to get everything to work as efficiently and as best you can. So be careful in your measurements. The length apart, it really doesn't matter because the laser beams are all going to combine one way or the other. Uh, just doesn't really, you just want to make sure that these are going to clear each other so they can move a little bit for adjustments there. So they're not going to bump into each other like that. Okay, so what I have done now is I have put these little risers on the dichroic mirror mounts, as you can see right there. I countersunk a screw right into it, and that actually puts these mirrors at the same level as the lasers, which will be at the same level as the uh, gavel mirror that it needs to uh, hit eventually. So here's a different view just to kind of illustrate how everything is now at exactly at the same level. As you can see, the laser beam right here is exactly at the same level as the mirror, which is the same level as the X mirror that it's going to hit right there. So that's exactly what you want to see right there. Everything's got to be exactly at the same height. Now I just kind of moved it over just to kind of show you like that. It's obviously not in position right now, but that's just to show the idea. Okay, so now you can see that I have the dichroic mirrors actually mounted. And as you can see, they're already screwed in right there. If you want to take a look at the bottom, you can see I have some countersunk holes on there. And I can actually move these around. As you can see, I can shift that a little bit because it has only one screw in it. 
and you can tighten that down until you get it at the position that you want it in. And of course for fine adjustment, we'll just be using these screws on there. But you can see they're basically at 45 degree angles to where the laser beams will come in. And that's what you want. Okay, now that I have the dichroic mirrors mounted, what I need to do is start mounting the lasers. But before I can mount these lasers, I need to actually put them on a riser, just like the uh, mirrors are on a riser right here, to make them all the same level. And as you can see, I have some reference lines that I have drawn on there. Those lines are the exact same distance as these lines right there. So as you can see, as you can kind of compare them together there. And what that will do is give me a reference for when I drill holes in here to mount the laser modules actually to it like that. So I know exactly where to go. And of course, the laser lens itself has to line up with that hole right, or line up uh, with the, uh, the reference line to make everything nice and straight. And that's what I'm going to do next, start drilling some holes. Okay, now you can see that I have mounted the laser mounts themselves, these guys. And you can see there's only one screw underneath for each right there. So that way I can twist them as I need to and tighten them back down. That'll help for any error uh, that we get later. Uh, so we can adjust for that. And basically, we're just going to mount it right there. There's going to be a couple holes drilled in there and to mount it to the base plate there. And before I do that, I will have a couple of uh, low power lasers in there to do some laser beam alignment. Just to make sure that I'm in the right area and I'm not making like a big mistake drilling holes where they shouldn't be. And not too long after that, I will drill holes for the, uh, for the Galvo scanner, which is what you see right here. And you can see there's a couple holes underneath there. And that'll just go right there, of course. And then we'll just start doing some alignment and testing with it after I get some lasers installed. So one thing we have not talked about is the installation of the green laser. As you can tell, that's what that big empty space is there for. The laser beam is going to fire that direction through those mirrors and out to that mirror and then out to the show. Problem is, is that here is our green laser. It is a lab style laser. It is pretty big. Puts out about 650 milliwatts after it fully warms up, and it's pretty bright. Problem being, besides its size, is the fact that the laser driver it came with can only put out to 5,000 uh, points per second modulation, and that just does not work very well. I need something that can go much, much faster than that. That's where this comes into play. This is a FlexMod version 3 laser driver. Very, very small, as you can see. It puts out to 4 watts, and it does up to 100,000 points per second. So it does very, it's very, very fast, and that's exactly what we need. So as you can tell, in order to make this fit on that over there, we're going to need to have some surgery done to it. So that's what we're going to do next. So what I have done here is I have removed the screws from the bottom of this plate right here. And as you can see, that exposes some of the components. Right here, that is a cooling fan. That's where the wires come in there to connect to everything. And these screws will actually secure this entire top piece uh, to the bottom piece, and we're going to remove those next. Okay, you can now see that the screws have been unscrewed there. We're going to remove this from the main housing there. And that exposes the laser itself, right there. And that is what we're interested in. We're actually going to be removing this piece and installing it on our red, green, blue laser module we're building. So that's going to be the very next step. So you can see I have now removed this uh, foam protective covering over the top of this, over the top of the laser unit itself here. And it just set some of the uh, adhesive that's still remaining on there. Right underneath here, you can see this white thing that's the Peltier element. That's for thermoelectric cooling. Basically, it's just a, a way to help transfer heat away from the laser itself. And we're not interested in that part, though, but we are just interested in this part. So we're going to need to cut some wires, and we're going to need to give them as much length as we possibly can. So we're going to actually 
cut the wire back here somewhere so we always have a little bit of extra. Okay, still removing some of the wires here and then disassembling everything. You might notice that there is several wires here that are coming from this unit. We're really only interested in two of them and those are the ones, the positive and the negative, that are actually going to power the laser itself. Uh, the other six wires are for, for example, two of them are for the cooling fan right here, uh, two of them are for the, the, the peltier element right there for the cooling, and there's actually uh, two more wires that run into this uh, laser unit there, which are for uh, uh, thermal sensing, so it knows how hot it's getting. But we're only interested in actually the uh, positive and negative for the laser itself. So completely removed now, this is the part we need. And here is the positive lead. The other thicker black wire is the negative lead. These are the thermal sensing wires right here, which uh, we're not going to be using for this, but we'll leave them on there because you never know what we might end up using them for. But anyways, these are what we want. And this is going to be installed over here just like that and we're gonna have to put a riser on it of course and drill a couple holes to make everything align correctly and that's what we're gonna start working on okay now what we're checking here is the height of everything because as I said uh, previously the height of everything needs to be exactly the same all the laser beams and mirrors that they strike have to be exactly at the same height they, there is one problem here though the green laser is just a little bit higher than the red and the blue laser here. As you can see, it's just slightly different right there. And it's maybe about, I'm estimating about two millimeters higher. So what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to file down some metal in order to make this work. As you can see, this right here is a half inch block of aluminum. This here is a quarter inch block. And it's pretty close, but it's not going to be aligned perfectly. So what we're going to have to do is probably start uh, sanding down uh, this block of aluminum right here or this one right below it in order to make it work. And that could take a little bit of time, but I'll come back to you when I have that done. Okay, what we're doing now is checking the alignment of the green and the blue laser before we even start drilling holes and getting everything permanently mounted. We're trying to make sure that we're even in the same ballpark to see that our work earlier, uh, measuring and cutting and drilling, has paid off. So, what you're looking at right there is the green laser module. It's on very low power right now, just so we don't blind ourselves. That first mirror that it strikes right there, that is the where the red uh, laser, as you can see there's a module for it right there in the middle of the screen. It's not installed. That's where the red would reflect off of and then pass through the blue one right here to combine with that, which the blue one is on, and uh, then it would exit out and create you know whatever color you want. Now the trick to alignment is, is that they all have to strike at exactly the same point. The green laser cannot be moved. Once that thing is uh, secured, it is going to be permanently secured, will not be able to be adjusted. It will just pass through the red and the blue mirrors and then exit. Therefore think of it as kind of like our... Uh, uh, kind of like the base alignment laser. The red and the blue laser will have to be adjusted around it. Now, uh, the blue laser, as you can see, it strikes at exactly the same spot on the mirror, right where the green laser passes through there. That is exactly what you want. If that is not doing that, that means that you cannot get the lasers to align. It is impossible. You can get them parallel to each other, but you will never actually get them to perfectly align with each other. So. They are right on top of each other and they exit at exactly the same spot on the mirror. Now, if we start to back off a little bit, you can see how the laser beams are starting to diverge a little bit. And that is fine, but we're going to adjust that with our dichroic mirrors with the little adjustment screws on there. You're looking at about maybe 12 feet away over there and it looks to me like maybe the laser beams are about 3 inches apart. And so we're going to fix that. So let's come on over here. And you can see I'm going to adjust that with those screws right there, those three of them right there. So let's take a look here. You can see how they're spread apart. They're getting closer. 
getting closer and they are right on top of each other right now they are perfectly aligned I'm looking down the laser beam now and I don't see any misalignment on there I'm looking for any green that might be sticking out or any blue that might be sticking out but it looks like they're perfectly on top of each other and looking all the way down there at the end of the garage they're right on top uh, looking pretty good so that's what we wanted to see that we could actually get everything aligned and it looks like we can do that so we're doing good